Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to this Monday morning with business coach Malloy. And I hope you have been having an amazing February. Uh, last week was happening. This week, we are on the verge of closure of month 11. And uh, by now, you should have a fair idea about where your 23, 24 business is going and what you should be doing to achieve a rocking 24, 25. If you have any queries about how to make a business plan, and uh, please watch my videos on the YouTube channel, subscribe to it, register on our WhatsApp uh, groups, the community group, because there's a lot of content that is going to, uh, that is coming, that has been, that has come up and is going to come on business planning. This is the time. Don't miss this next 45 days because this is where you are going to create your dream. So we have been having a fabulous response to this uh, uh, part of five series. And today we are on day six. Last week we had, a, uh, we discussed about, or I gave you five reasons why people buy from you. And uh, thankfully, thank you everyone for this amazing responses that, that we have received. And uh, please keep on sending those messages. Please tell us which of those, uh, uh, which are your uh, pain points or which are, the areas that you would want to uh, want us to speak on and i will give you five reasons so this is the part of five series this is going to continue for the next one year at least and every monday morning same place same time we will give you a new part of five today we are going to speak about why customers don't buy from you okay. have you ever wondered why some of your clients say no to you while they're buying from somebody else and why is that some people can sell anything to anyone effortlessly and you are not? There are, in fact, many, many reasons why clients often say no over yes or yes over no. But first of all, many people, when they get to hear no's, they start questioning themselves that do I have it in me to sell? So first question, do you need to have a technical knowledge of selling to be able to sell effectively? And the answer is yes and no. It certainly helps in having this knowledge, but it cannot be the only reason why customers are not buy from, buying from you. Do you need to be an extrovert to be a good salesperson? Certainly not. And, and me, as an example, I am not an extrovert. I'm a highly introverted person. But over the past 33, 34 years, I've been doing a decent job what, what, in on whatever I have been doing. Do you need to know those 101 different sales techniques? Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to know 101. It's actually quite the opposite. The fewer techniques you have to remember, the more you focus on your prospects for a closure. The late Zig Zagler said there are five main reasons why people don't buy. And I'm going to talk about those five reasons. Now, the reason number one is no need. Please understand this, that if the customer does not have a need or a want for the product, there will, no, there will not be any sale. You may go and break your head multiple times with that prospect, but if you're not able to pass through that psychological barrier that is that has been created between you and him into understanding whether he truly needs your product or service, you will be actually wasting your time. If your prospect really doesn't have a need for what you're selling, there will be no sales. So stop wasting your time. It's very similar to the example of uh, trying to sell pet food to somebody who doesn't like a pet. They simply don't have the need for that product. And while a lot of sales training uh, and sales trainers will tell you how to sell a refrigerator to an igloo, I think it's a, it's a sheer waste of time. How to sell a comb to a bald man is a sheer waste of time. So please don't fall that fall into that trap of trying to sell anything to anyone. You have to sell something to someone who has either an overt or a latent need for that product. You should be able to identify 
that there is a latent need and you should be able to pick it up onto the overt need, the visible need. But if there is no overt or a visible need and no latent need, stop wasting your time. Number two, no hurry. After an outstanding sales presentation, and I have gone through this multiple times, how many of us have heard our prospects say, let me think about it. And going by past experience of a sales career and a marketing career and a business development career and leadership roles and now a business coach, I know you will have heard of it and this will be your most common objection to all. In reality, how long do you think they are going to think about it? The moment you step out of the door, they'll probably shut off their mind and focus on something that is very critical. So there are two ways of looking at it. Does the client actually want to buy that product? And is, is, it, is, there, a, is there a desire in, in him to acquire that product or service immediately? Or through your presentation, have you been able to bring that sense of urgency in the client? I've heard this so many times from not only not only salesperson of my clients or the teams that I need, uh, was leading or my current teams, that client says, let's meet next time. Ladies and gentlemen, there has to be a stop to this next time. Because if you have not been able to create that sense of urgency, the client will take you on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a walk around the garden and you will not end up closing that client. So instead of focusing your energies on prospective clients who would want to buy the product, you are now focusing your energies on someone who has promised to think about it and would want to meet you again and again to understand more. So creating the sense of urgency and identifying whether that sense of urgency actually exists is a critical parameter into a sales process. So if you plan ahead and build answers to these expected objections, you stand a much better chance of securing the sale. For instance, if you demonstrate your product or service and which shows them that how much money they can save by using your product or service, or in our case, how much growth they can, they can bring in or how much succession planning they can do. If we close the presentation with the statement, the sooner we install this fantastic product or, or service or start you will start using that service, the sooner you will, be start, you will start making money, saving time and getting better results. So bring in that sense of urgency. And if, if the sense of urgency does not exist in the client, yes, the client should be kept on the back burner. That you should continue to engage with the client, but don't make it a focused effort. Third, no desire. The first rule in selling is that people buy what they want, not necessarily what they need. We spoke about the need generation as number one, but from the need, you come down to the want. In other words, if they have no desire for your product or service or a promise of a solution to the problem that they have or the solution they want but don't have, they are not going to sell a product. You are never able, never ever be able to sell your product to that customer or the customer will not buy from you. They may have a need. They may have a need of a business coaching, but they don't desire to get it from Malloy. Their preferences are somebody else. So we will make effort to change the preferences. But if even after that, if I have not been able to create the desire that I am the right person to be able to solve the problem that they are having, they will never buy from me. I have not been able to create the desire. If you're selling cars and somebody actually desires a new car, then you are your part over the hump. But you still need to know, you still need to persuade them that yours is the actual car which will help them fulfill that desire. However, if you are selling something less glamorous, 
card is a card is something that is also flaunting as a product. But if you're selling something a, a little less glamorous, like somebody the other day was telling me, pipes, they are manufacturer of pipes. My pipes get into the wall. Nobody sees the sees the wall, sees the pipe after the construction is complete. You may need to fan the desire significantly higher for products which are not visible to the outside world or a solution that does not have a tangible benefit. So what does your pro pro uh, prospect desire? The simple answer to this is the desire a solution to the problem they have, but they don't want. By asking the right questions and listening, you should be able to uncover the specific problem and present the solution in the desirable light. Too many salespeople are talking. Too many salespeople are not asking the right questions. Too many salespeople are seeing the superficial. Too many salespeople are not unpeeling the onion. So ask more questions, uncover the actual problem, and only then you'll be able to position your product. Number four, no trust. If your prospect doesn't trust you, they will not buy in a million years. And I was this is this is a conversation I was having with one of our prospective coaches who wants to join us in Kolkata. And uh, and she said, "What is that thing that helps the client close?" And that thing, ladies and gentlemen, for our business is trust. Here is a successful business owner who's running a successful business for multi-generation, earning, having a great top line, having a decent bottom line, now is going to uh, take help from somebody across the table like me for scaling up the business. What do you think is the primary characteristic? And the primary characteristic is that you should trust that Malloy can actually help me scale up my business. So, do, so you need to ask yourself every single day, why don't they trust me or why do some of my customers trust me? The customers, all of us have customers who trust us. How can we replicate that trust across the entire prospect uh, landscape? If you want to build trust and credibility with your customers and hold them for life, Follow these five important tips. Number one, avoid selling a solution that is not in the customer's best interest. Don't oversell. Don't do a wrong sale. Go away from a sale and say, I don't have the right product or service for you. Second, never mis uh, misrepresent a feature or advantage or benefits of your product or service. Third, don't promise anything that you can't deliver. Fourth, if and when you must speak to you, uh, of the, your competition, speak very highly of them. Customers hate it when you are degrading your competitors. Please never do that. And finally, when you make promises, keep them. If you promise to send them a proposal in the next 24 hours, do that. For that, if you need to sleep two hours less, fair enough. But do that because customers are, 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 are engaging with you at different levels. If you're not able to skip, keep up to your promises of some documentation that you need to share with them, how will they ever trust you or, or trust that you are the right person to solve the problem? Number five, no money. If your prospect doesn't have the money, and I mean really doesn't have any money, they don't want to, they don't want your business. If they don't have the money for the product or service that you're selling, see, there are two ways of looking at it. One, you will ask it yourself, does he actually not have money? Or is there no value for money that they're seeing in your product or service? Hence, your positioning needs to change. Second, they have the money but not for the level of product or service that you're offering to them, maybe at a slightly uh, slightly uh, lower level, a penetration level. And third, they actually don't have the money. So when a person tells you, I don't have the money, or we have no money in the budget at this particular time or something along the, these lines, maybe you will have to ask, how can we help you fit in this into your budget at this time? And have you start taking advantage of a terrific opportunity? 
let money not be the reason why you get, give up on a sale. Figure out if there is a possibility of offering a lower level of service, lower downgraded product to be able to fit into his budget. Maybe he's just testing us. Do you have any easy uh, payment terms that you can apply for in this particular case? You might also find out if there's money in another budget that can be transferred to meet their needs. Make sure you ask a lot of questions because no money does not always mean no money. Your job as a salesperson or a business owner is to help buyers overcome all these five areas and help them take advantage of your outstanding proposition. So these are the five reasons why customers don't buy from you. And each of these reasons are overcomable. You can overcome them if you open up your mind and say, what can I do to address these five issues? Thank you so much for being with us on this Monday morning. Wish you a fantastic Monday. Wish you a fantastic week. And I shall see you, see you next week, same place, same time, with another episode of The Power of Five. Five reasons for dash dash. Let us know if you want, to, want us to speak on any particular subject, and I'll be happy to do that. Thank you so much. Have a great morning, and I shall see you next Monday. <music>